In today's Monster Manual Minis, we're going to be turning to page 37 and looking at the Carrion Crawler, a classic D&D monster. Let's squirm on in. From the early editions and early renderings of Carrion Crawlers and modules and game supplements, I've always liked Carrion Crawlers as villains. In the current 5th edition, Carrion Crawlers are large monstrosities and they're unaligned. Wanting to do a mini, I checked around for a few different options and settled on the WizKids official D&D Carrion Crawler miniature to paint. So I went and picked one up. Now the monster manual shows us that their armor class is 13 based on natural armor. So pretty thick rubbery hides and some plating around their face. Average of 51 hit points. Their speed is 30 feet. Their climb is 30 feet. Strength of 14. Dexterity of 13. Constitution is really high at 16. Intelligence of 1, very low. Wisdom, 12. Charisma, also low at 5. They're pretty perceptive with a perception of plus 3. They have dark vision to 60 feet. Their passive perception is 13. Their challenge rating is 2 in 5th edition, so 450 experience points for defeating 1. They do have keen smell, so advantage on their wisdom their perception checks that rely on smell. And then of course spider climb. They can crawl or climb difficult surfaces upside down and ceilings without needing to make a check. They do have multi-attack. So it's two attacks, one with their tentacles and then one with its bite. The tentacles are a melee weapon attack plus eight to hit. They reach 10 feet against one target and their hit is a 1d4 plus 2 poison damage. And then the target has to succeed on a DC 13 constitution save or be poisoned for one minute. And until the poison ends, the target is paralyzed. The target can repeat their saving throw, of course, at the end of each of their turns, ending the poison on a successful save. Their bite, they have a melee weapon attack of plus 4 to hit. And that's 5 foot for one target, doing 2d4 plus 2 piercing damage. So in the background, they scour around looking for basically rotten fresh flesh from carcasses and slimy bones that remain. They're aggressively attacking any creature that trespasses on their territory or disturbs their feasting. So pretty potent monster that you can put in lots of different environments. For me, as I was painting the mini, I looked at a lot of different options on how to paint this miniature. So one of the things that I really looked at was different types of grubs and underground worms that are available. And I settled on this pattern for a couple of reasons. It's got almost a tick-like coloring for the upper plates and legs where I feel there's more like armor and then a fleshy body that's more like a grub and based on a lot of the images I found the dark spots down low is kind of their guts what's digesting and everything and so that's how I wanted to lay it out in paint so really make it look kind of tick like as well as grub like kind of blending the two different pieces. Added in some tones with some pinks and light blues for that fleshy kind of feel. And then off white to white. And then instead of doing a flat seal, I went with a glossy seal to make it really worm like the eyes in the original version as well as the fifth edition version of the carrion crawler seemed kind of like wet and moist. So that was my inspiration, and here is my Monster Manual Mini of a Carrion Crawler. Definitely a great monster that you can put in front of a lot of different party sizes and skill levels based on numbers of Carrion Crawlers in the environment. 
highly recommend using them in your games, especially as you are looking at challenging with beasts alone. Beasts don't pose that moral quandary that other humanoid races can. So if you're looking at just combat encounters for PCs to overcome that can have some good tie-ins to the environment, carrion crawlers are a great option. And because they're a CR2, basically that means four level two PCs they're a decent challenge against. So good monster with a lot of different opportunities for you to use them in games and you can really play on those buggy aspects to kind of creep out your players and get them in the mindset of being up against such a odd monstrosity type of foe especially if they have any fears for beetles or ticks or worms and grubs you can really play that up especially through your paint job in how you choose to paint the mini. Let me know your comments below on what you think on my paint job and don't hesitate to let me know if you've got interests or experience running the carrion crawler in the comments how you've used them. Here's some examples on in dungeon use when a party comes across them just out in the open come down some stairs the thief has already gone through and the carrion crawler starts coming in because they're invading the territory. The carrion crawler is a good foe for the party to try to get a tactical advantage sneaking around and taking on multiple aspects. And additionally, if you've got PCs who are investigating tombs and ruins, a carrion crawler having smelling the change of the scent of the rotting flesh sneaking up from behind from its lair fantastic surprise opportunity and another setting is as a kind of lower beast for a mummy or another larger stronger opponent the carrion crawler can pose as a kind of intermediary fence or wall to that main bad guy who can cast spells from a distance and keep your tanks busy up front good opportunity to kind of try to split the party or give multiple opponents for a stronger party. And then here is one where someone failed their deck save and fell into a pit trap with a carrion crawler. The other three party members have to figure out a way to either get down there to help fight the carrion crawler, lure the carrion crawler up, or just save their PC. So that's going to cover our Monster Manual Mini for this week. The Carrion Crawler from page 37 of the Monster Manual. I hope you enjoyed the video and look forward to next week when we flip open the Monster Manual and cover a new Monster Manual Mini. Enjoy and have a great week. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching our video. We hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to hit the subscribe button to help us grow. And here's another video that we feel you might enjoy. Until next time, help us answer the question of where will your adventures take you?